Hey guys, Vertigo here, and it is 2019. A new year and one that I hope will be a great year. I haven't kept up with making videos as much last year because, well, it's pretty hard to do. But I think I'd like to try to make more videos more often and make things that you might find helpful if you're into fish and invertebrates. Well, here's a preview, nothing's in order, have fun with that information. I'm not really expecting people to subscribe or go nuts about my videos, but they are a good exercise for me as a creator, and it would be nice to have more Australians out there helping out in the Australian perspective of the hobby in this way. It's also useful for helping customers learn to care for any invertebrates I sell. Wait, what's that? I sell things? Why yes, if you head on to sadsvertigo.com.au, you can find my invertebrate store, where I will be selling things like captive bread mantises, feeders, shrimp, hobby supplies, and sweet sweet merch. Eventually, it will be more populated, it just takes time. Grow up so you can breed already. Okay, but this is a labour of love, but I've been working hard to grow in the past year. Small, unconventionally slimy, creepy critters are unexpectedly wonderful pets to take care of if you don't have a strong phobia and actually could help you get over those phobias. Though these pets will not appreciate hugs and kisses. A lot of people don't know about how cool fish, crustaceans, insects and arachnids are, or that you can even keep them as pets. It's not as weird as you think, so how about we get started by meeting all of my current critters in the invertebrate room. Okay, so this room is super temporary, it's going to be moved, it's going to grow, it's going to become semi-automated to help with maintenance later on. Half of my animals aren't even in here yet, because there's a lot that's not done. Let's start with my terrestrial invertebrates. Whoa, who's this? It's an Archimantus Sabrina, I think. I'm still waiting on getting proper identification of her from a museum, so we're waiting on that. Her name is Nyx, she's nearly an adult now, and she is big, she is beautiful, and probably my favourite, which is why I'm showing her first. In another room, I have a male of the same species. His name is Poppy Seed. Don't know why, just felt right. He is a bit smaller and younger than my female, but males tend to mature faster and not grow as big. So I'm hoping, hoping, that the timing of maturation is right, and maybe I can breed these two. I have a bunch of little tiny nymphs, baby Archimantis of unknown species at the moment. V6 are hopefully going to breed when they're older. And I only just received these guys from a breeder in West Australia this week. They are so small, so cute, that will definitely become a lot bigger soon. I also have one more species of mantis in my collection. False garden mantis, or Pseudomantis albofimbriata, which is a mouthful to say. You might have noticed, hey, what's wrong with her legs? And what's wrong with his wings? And you're right, they shouldn't look like that, but they happened to molt really poorly the last time they molted, and there's a number of reasons why poor molts would happen, but that's a video for another time. These guys, though, molted poorly because they decided to go hang from the worst spots in their enclosures. Like, what mantis molts next to the floor? Anyway, these two are adults now, and I can't fix how they look. Next week, they'll be taking a blind date together, and hopefully, they'll breed. And then we have some colonies and cultures. Vita crickets for all of my mantises. I don't like them very much. They like to bite my thumb. Isopods. We've got two kinds here. The ones that roll, and the ones that don't. The ones that don't, they compensate. Springtails, which you can't see because my camera won't capture them. I'm planning on having bioactive enclosures for all of my mantises, so these guys are a must. The isopods will be helping out too. 
flightless fruit flies. They're actually only commercially available in Australia for $1 per individual fly from a lab supplier, which is expensive for so few flies. So I decided to buy those flies and culture them myself and make them available for hobbyists at a much cheaper rate. To be fair, I had to start with 20 flies and along with postage, it cost me $50. Those are some expensive genetically modified flies, but it's worth it. Now I have food for my smallest carnivorous animals and I'll be able to share them with all of you if you're in Australia. That's all of the terrestrial invertebrates for now, so let's move on to the aquatic creatures I've got rocking here. It might be obvious already, but I've got lots of shrimp. All of them are varieties of cherry shrimp, though right now I just keep black, blue dreams, orange sakura and sunkiss, bloody mary, and yellow cherry shrimp. I'm hoping to add green jades to my collection soon, but it's going to take a while until then. Here are some snails, they are not the mainstay of any of my aquariums, but they are important residents nonetheless, they eat leftovers until the sand. I've got my ragtag cherry shrimp tank, it used to house a better, but I felt it was too small and just not ideal. Fusaria rocks make the water hard and bettas generally do better in neutral or softer water, so I just throw coals and extra shrimp in there. The colours interbreed and have ended up looking like wild shrimp, but some interesting amalgamates of colour have turned up. And lastly, just these two bettas. It's funny, I started keeping animals independently with better fish. If you look on my channel, you can see I've kept a lot in the past four to five years. The novelty of them has worn off with me, but I still love their personalities. I think it was the rampant inbreeding and genetic weakening of domestic better that has dampened my passion for them. It also sucks a bit because they're a one better per tank kind of fish, they just don't get along at all. These two aren't really supposed to be living together permanently. This little unnamed guy is a young fry that is still growing out, and will eventually get his own space when it's big enough. I just have trouble seeing him as small as he is right now. I say he, but I don't know what sex he is, and I don't, I don't even know what variety of better it is. It was sort of a mystery better from a local source, so time will tell what this better is. Now this big guy is not Gobbler. I didn't name him. My fiance picked him and his name. I think it's inspired off the white Pomeranian on a YouTube channel called Cumlord. Weird name. You should check him out though. Don't worry, they're very G-rated despite the name and very cute and funny. Not Gobbler is a dragon scale placat, a short tailed variety of better, whose dragon scale trait is the white shiny layer of his scales. It looks thick, hence the name dragon scale. He's a bit lumpy because dragon scales tend to overgrow, and it does seem like he's gained some tumours and lumps in places that worry me. He's a pretty grumpy guy like most betters, and I wake up every morning, and he is just very mad at me when I get up. And I think that's everyone. Oh, oh, what's this? It's a smart boy. Hi, Sonny. Hopefully I can keep making videos like this in the future. It takes so much time to edit something like this when it's gonna only be 10, 20 minutes long. So I do appreciate you here for watching this, liking, commenting, whatever, but even if no one watches this, honestly, I just enjoy doing things like this. So, I'll see you all next time!